You've been charged for staying dedicated to the grind. You have the right to remain silent and keep the hustle to yourself or help others with the game. State your name for the record. Marcus Tillman. And what makes you an entrepreneur? What makes me an entrepreneur is the fact that I solve problems. I see what I like and I see a problem in what I like and then I go and I solve it and I make money off of it. So what made you choose this type of business? Um, what made me be an entrepreneur mostly was um, I was in college, I got hurt um, playing sports, and then I was like, dang, so what the hell I'm gonna do? You know what I'm saying? Like, what I'm gonna do? I've been doing sports all my life. I was ranked number one in track in the nation. I was like good in football. I was doing my thing, you know? So when I got hurt in college, I was just like, man, I know all the girls in college. Um, they like me for some reason. And guys follow girls, so let me start off doing parties. And it just it went from there. I couldn't think small. I had to keep going. So it just turned into like a big snowball effect. So what is your biggest challenge as an entrepreneur, and how did you overcome? How did you overcome it? Um, my biggest challenge as an entrepreneur, I would say getting over hurdles with people. You know, um, as an entrepreneur, like everybody out the for themselves, you know what I'm saying? Everybody wants to figure out where they can go, where where is their success, you know what I mean? Even in, when they get there. So I think for me, the biggest thing was was people trying to know who's really there for me and who's it, whose loyalty is going to outlast money or outlast whatever success we doing. So how I ever came that was just I had to go through it. That was really it, you know, um. Just going through it and, and persevering and just letting it be what it is. So you're saying people, um, can you clarify like more of people like they try to use you for your talents, for their benefit? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, all right. So say, example, for example, you meet somebody, y'all cool, y'all doing y'all thing. And this person might have more than you or can give more than you. You know what I'm saying? So... <clears throat> Sometimes it's it's different levels. This is just an example. So sometimes people will befriend you. You know what I mean? When they befriend you, you think everything's cool. Next thing you know, you lose millions, you know, in the situation. So, I mean, I think like, I w all right, so let me better phrase it. I think my biggest thing um, was people, but I learned how to deal with people. I learned how to see what was fake and what was real. You know what I'm saying? And the longer it takes you to, to notice those things, the more you're going to lose. So I had to just figure out, you know, who was for me and who wasn't. So what is your ultimate goal? Are you seeking fame or fortune? Um, I'm seeking wealth. Um, I'm seeking health, wealth, love, happiness. Um, that's what I'm going for. The fame, really, I don't really care about. Um, I've, I'm around a lot of famous people, like, you know, like yourself. Grind Face TV. I'm around. Um, I'm around a lot of different things, so I'm not really looking for the fame. Cause I see that the fame don't really do nothing. I see like some people I know they famous, and that's it. They ain't got no money. They're gonna use you for yours to get theirs. You know. So I'm going for the wealth, man. The love, the happiness, the you know what I'm saying. The whole American dream. So what type of advice would you give young entrepreneurs that's want to take this, um, this road, this trip? What I would tell a young entrepreneur, let me take my time on this one. Um, I would tell a young entrepreneur, um, take the risk, I don't do it at all. You know what I mean? If you're going to do it, everything is a risk. Some people, time is a risk. Maybe they got to put in more time than somebody else that they see. Or maybe their risk might be um losing something they risk might be spending more money it, it, whatever it is you got to take that risk or just lose it don't do it don't waste your time how do you get funded or creative strategies to execute minimum cash flow say that one more time for, um, how do you fund your projects with minimum cash flow how do you fund your projects with minimum cash flow um the least amount of cash you have the more knowledge you need to have so for me, I, I think there's three things that um, an entrepreneur, need, especially um, a millennial entrepreneur, if your demographic, if you're not a millennial, 
and you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to figure out how to grow or you are a millennial and you want to be an entrepreneur, there's three things in, that's happening right now. I say consistency. You need consistency. You need um, persistency. And you need to be able to, how do I say it? You need to be able to see things through. You know what I mean? So for me, uh, the more that I learned, the more that I got around people and made myself more accessible, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I only got these $20. There's this event going on. All these people going to be there. It's these people I'm trying to get to. So it was just more so being smart about it, reading books to know, you know, how I'm going to conversate with people, understanding what people like, understanding to do research about people, um, depending on if I want to meet with someone. And it depends on how I want to come up. If I need an investment, then I need to do things that that, that investor wants to see. You know what I mean? If, I, if I'm going to raise my own brand, I'm not going to use an investor, then I need to make sure I'm really consistent on anything that I'm doing because without consistency, you're just not going to get there. You're always looking at everything around you. Oh, man, it's been a year. Why this ain't happen? Oh, man, what's up with this? So I think um, the best way to do something without money is being consistent, being persistent, and being accessible. So how did you come across your brand name, Benny Benchy? Um... When I was growing up, they always said Vinny to me, you know, because uh, of my dad. And from there, it just kind of stuck. And then one day I looked it up, and then Vinny Vinci meant, um, Vinny Vinci meant I saw a conquer. So I was like, dang, that's dope. I want to use that. So I just kind of stuck with it. Um, but it wasn't nothing I grew up with, you know what I mean? Uh, my mom, she, my mom called me a hundred different names. Uh, my original name, like I said, is Marcus. So, I mean, people say Mark, Marcus, Vinny. It just, you know, all depends. But my, my entertainment name means the world to me because I literally see myself where I'm going and I'm conquering everything I want to do. So how do you come about, come across with Campus Tainment? Am I saying it right, Campus Tainment? Campus Tainment, yes. Man, that's so funny because um, I came up with the name Campus Tainment pretty much by... Um, I was at the house one day, and then um, I couldn't get no investors. I couldn't get sponsorships. I didn't understand what I was doing wrong. And I was working at this brand for so long, and there were so many people that loved it. And I was like, maybe the name, you know, that I was using at the time, I think it was like One Young Life or something like that. <laughs> That's what it was called, One Young Life Entertainment. Because um, the concept was, hey, you're only young once, turn up. It's a college brand. And I felt like maybe that wasn't registering the people and letting them know, like, okay, this is what he's doing. So I was like, dang, how do I put entertainment and colleges together? And then, you know, how people like put words together and try to figure out how they would match. And one day I was like, yo, campus tainment. Oh, shit. Campus like the college, entertainment, campus tainment. So I ran with it. And funny story about that. Once I made the name, I came up, I made the... Uh, <laughs> I made the um, the email for it. I mean, not the email, the domain, right? After a year, um, I forgot that I had to renew it. This is all me learning my entrepreneur stuff. I forgot that I had to renew the email. Three days later, somebody stole it. I bought it for 200 I mean, $2 is worth 200 now. You know what I mean? So you never know the work and the value that you put in this stuff. I'm, it was just a side note, but kind of funny. So what, what separates you from your competitors in the campus teaming party college scene? All right. Um, what separates me from my competitors is, um, I think, um, our goals. My goal with campus teaming is to change the way that uh, colleges is, is, is looked at. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that's the only way to really change, like, the world is you got to start with who's going to be making decisions now, right? Or next. So with Campus Tainment, um, I pretty much looked at my competitors, and a lot of them are not in the college world, right? So a lot of them would be like Live Nation, people that do colleges, uh, AEG, those brands. So when I looked at them, one, they, they're doing concerts, but they're not pertaining to colleges. And then there were a couple brands that I came across that – they don't do tours, but what they do is they help brands understand 
college students. So once I X'd out Live Nation, like they not in my realm, they not even in college, I started looking at these other, um, one is called Fluent, right? So I started looking at these different um, entities and I'm like, okay, one, you can't tell a brand what a college student is doing or what they like if it's like playing. It's like playing plain telephone. You ever played telephone in elementary school? You tell somebody something, they gotta go around. You see when it comes back. That's kind of like the what they play. All right, we ask the students. The students told this person. They tell this person. Now it's this big company that's supposed to know everything about college students. That's not the way I do it. My thing is I'm direct. So um, for me to beat my competitors, I had to build a, a system that consists of very few components. So with Campus Tainment, it consists of a legal team, a directing team, a communications team, um, a visionary, and an in, uh, integrator. So pretty much my communication team are all fraternity people. You know, so we pretty much connect with the fraternities because they know what's happening on the school right now. They know what students are talking about. They know why they parties ain't working, why they parties are working. So I pretty much beat my competitors by being direct. And now I'm able to make results for companies. Like yesterday, I was actually on the phone with AAA. You know, they tow cars. They do things like that, roadside assistance. And then um, one of our stops is going to be in Orlando at UCF. So I was like, hey, they were like, hey, um, you know, why would we use you? And I said, well, how many people on the UCF campus, which is directly across the street, how many people, you know, at that campus are, are signed up to AAA? They didn't know. You're spending all this money at the school across the street, but only thing you get in return is for them to work for you. They're not signing up. They're not making. So pretty much I uh, help them understand like what's really happening in the college world. You can't go there because kids love smartphones and think a guy from Samsung is going to tell you what's going on. It's not going to work. You need campus attainment. Well, seeing some of that knowledge fall into your marketing strategy, don't you also have a marketing um, business also? Yes, yeah, so I have a, a marketing agency. It's called Viral Empire. And um, pretty much with, with Viral Empire, um, I learned a lot in the entertainment world. So uh, for a lot of artists or music people out there, if you ever heard of uh, Empire, they're pretty much like a distribution company. So I thought about them like, man, I'm a hip hop, swaggy, cool young entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? I'm the mentor that's going to like tell you what it is. You know what I'm saying? The way I say it, it's not all about being professional and all that. So I made Viral Empire because I wanted to be something that uh, people would enjoy, you know, and want to work with and, and they can relate to. It's not too businessy. So um, <clears throat> started Viral Empire and um, yeah, that was it. We pretty much catered to artists, um, small businesses, big businesses, helping you with uh, marketing solutions via social media, um, no, understanding your target market understanding how to do blasts, understanding what growth is, understanding, you know, all those little knickknacks if you need a CRM system, things like that. So tell us a little bit about your background in music. Um, music, my music background, wow. So <clears throat> first, for the record, for everybody, I did not want to be in entertainment at all. I wanted to play sports my whole life. You know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, I didn't get to. So, um... As I was doing like my promotional stuff in college, um, I ended up moving back to Miami um, with my dad. Uh, my dad actually built King of Diamonds out there, so I went to go help him out with that. Um, and then uh, I met up with Spectacular from Pretty Ricky. We pretty much, you know, started hanging out, started vibing. And at this time, Pretty Ricky wasn't talking about getting back together. They wasn't talking about doing nothing. You know what I mean? It was just like big bro, little bro. And um, from there, we got, you know, I started letting him know my ideas on marketing and, you know, what I think. Because I, I wanted to um, do more things with him. And I actually brought Spec to Texas, Clean Texas, and to uh, do an event. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Clean254. And um, we did an event in Clean Texas. <laughs> and then from there, um, I would say, I, you know, we just kicked it off. And I started being more of his assistant because I was like, yo, I see where this can go. And then if he had more help, it'll be better. 
You know what I mean? So I was like, man, let me assist you. Let me learn some of this stuff. And in return, you know, you can show me what I need to know and we'll help each other get there. So from there, I mean, I started, God, man, I started being everywhere. I started being around the Flow Riders, the Pleasure Peas, the Lil Wayne's, all the hottest clubs, um, around the biggest people. That That's when I started seeing girls screaming. You know what I mean? I didn't know who they was. They screaming for me, didn't know my name. You know, so that's when I first started getting into it. And then I started getting to know, you know, more managers and things like that. So from there, from the assisting, <clears throat> I started learning how important communication was. Um, like I was saying before, accessibility and consistency. So what I started doing was, you know, just networking a little bit. Now, for a little tip for all y'all out there, if you with somebody bigger than you and, and you're the assistant or whatever the case may be, you go attack the other people in your area. Don't try to be the assistant trying to go talk to Rick Ross. You know what I'm saying? Like, it don't work like that. So I just, I knew my place. You know what I'm saying? And I knew where I wanted to go. So I started getting around, like, the other assistants. You know what I'm saying? Getting their numbers, hanging with them. And then sometimes when you get, you know, around other people that maybe they a celebrity and they kid around your age. You know what I'm saying? I started getting around like millionaire kids, billionaire kids, just kept building and building and building to the point where it was like, okay, bet. So um, then I went on, we went on a couple tours. Um, I learned tour life. And then uh, that's when I decided to start my own management um, companies called Loudmouth Music Source. And, and that's pretty much how I kicked off. So what what happened with the situation with you at Akon and Young Jeezy when you met them? <laughs> That shit was embarrassing. So let me tell y'all what happened. So it was my <laughs> one, <clears throat> I've met a whole bunch of celebrities before this, right? So we were doing the marketing, um, we we're building on the marketing um company. To be honest with you, it's a monetization company. We didn't do marketing, we did monetization, but um it was a mark uh, monetization company. We were building on that. So I met a couple um celebrities already and then what happened was um uh, what was the question you asked me again what happened with the situation when you met akon and young jesus okay so we we in the middle of building the monetization company um getting to know all these celebrities ain't shell shocked don't really care because i'm trying to get to the money right so all of a sudden we um uh, akon's coming over He's about to meet with us. We about to get his Facebook page. We're going to make some bread. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's excited, right? So when Akon was coming in the office, the door is closed. So mind you, I'm assisting. So I go in to go open the door. And then, you know, he's walking in as I'm going to open it. So I just, that was my first time really being like, yo, like, like I'm a fan of yours. You know what I mean? Because it's Akon, he don't put lights in his country, he did things that just make me be like, yo, that's impressive to me. So my first words to him was, what's up, uh, Akon? Akon and Young Jeezy. And I don't know why I did that. Everybody looked at me stupid. Akon looked at me stupid. I looked at me stupid. So that was my first time, like, my first hiccup, you know, in the whole situation. <laughs> so so I hear about why I was there. So why did you always get... Fire. You got fired from this company around four times. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is the reason why you get fired from a nine to five so much? Um, I don't think I'm fit for nine to fives. You know what I'm saying? I think that I think I just think so far outside the box. Like, um, one of the best things about being an entrepreneur, one of the things that you need as an entrepreneur is you need to um you gotta have a fight in you. You know what I mean? You got to be competitive. You got to have a fight in you. And you got to, you got to want more. You got to want more. You got to like challenge where somebody else want to be. You know what I mean? If you around them. So I think that I just challenge so much. I want to do so much. I, I move so fast and certain things like I can't do slow. So certain times things were slow and I just messed up. I, man, you was there, bro. what I do? I called a, um, I posted that one thing on Young Buck page. What was it? I, I called it a, 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 
not retarded. I, don't, I, I can't remember. Oh, no, I think I called it a Porsche Panorama, and it was a uh, it was a Corvette. <laughs> I don't know, bro. I, I just I just fucked up a lot, man. I gotta work for myself, man. I gotta do what I like. So most people don't really know you part of a comedian by natural. I mean, you was the life of the office. <laughs> I mean, you kept us entertained at the office for another whole eight hours, you know. Yeah. So do you do you find yourself doing more comedian shit? Um I don't know. I don't think I'm that funny. People tell me that all the time. You've told me that a lot of times. I think uh, I think I want to try it out using Instagram, like maybe some viral things. I just got to find out what skit I would be dope doing or something. I just got to go. Um, but I, I thought about trying to, you know, step it up a little bit and see what I could do, see if I get some chuckles. So how, how do you handle with failure? Do you learn from it or what? Um, Pretty much what I do is um, when it comes to failure, I... For when it comes to failure, I learn from it, and then I take the E—I mean, the L off, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? I learned and I earned, baby. That's it. Like, cause at the end of the day, is is what I learned is um how you look at things is true. It's true to you. You know what I'm saying? So because I look at um failure is quitting, um maybe making a mistake or not not reaching what you should have reached or not getting those goals. A lot of times it's how you looked at it, how you planned it. Um, maybe what you learned or what you knew wasn't enough. So I just look at it as you got to learn and then you got to earn. What are some of your success habits? Some of my successful habits are making sure I wake up, staying consistent, um, thanking God every day, um, what else? I would say making sure I work out, making sure um, my biggest thing, I think, would be people, making sure that I network with people, making sure I'm accessible. Um, I think it's a lifestyle kind of. I think I made it a lifestyle. I made being successful in my life. I think it's the best way to kind of put it. Okay, so what about this brand called Straight Millions? How did that come about? So Straight Million came about, um, it came about when I was actually uh, working with a, a marketing agency. And then um, around this time, I actually, you know, knew you, Grind Face TV. And then um, you was very inspiring, told me a lot of things that I, I should do. I was very young at that time. Um, I didn't know a lot. I think I was more, um, I was smart but naive. I was... Uh, a lot of things, you know, so being around, you know, the brand Grind Face TV while we own it, you know, ironic, <laughs> uh, is one of those things like I came up with Straight Million because it was it was what I always seen. I always seen, you know, you going at it. And I'm like, yo, this dude's going to get Straight Million, but like he's going to get to it. And then I was just like, yo, I want to come up with something like that. Like, how do you tell people how to get to the money? You know what I mean? What is what? I, like, how do we keep it straight? Straight Million. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of came up with me just being amped on that. Like, yo, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get a straight million. And then, yeah, it's kind of how it went. I just wanted, I want to influence others. Um, I know, I think I see my life. So I know a uh, straight million is going to end up being something that I end up um, using later in life to, to help others. You know what I mean? So that's pretty much what it is. A lot of things that I've learned in my entrepreneur growth is uh, I've started naming things straight to the point. You know what I mean? Like campus tainment, straight million, things like that. So it's, it came up being influenced and, and being motivated. Yeah, I've seen this documentary floating around, Still Our Rise of you, man. It looked pretty interesting. What came about that? Still Our Rise. Um, Still Our Rise came around because um, i seen how the people I looked up to really did look down on me. You know, and you sometimes when you're around people bigger than you, you got to be careful. You got to be strong, you know, because if you're not strong, the things that they say when they get mad can really put you down and put you in a place where you feel like, man, are they right? They successful, you know. So I think uh, Still I Rise came once um, I was at the company I was at. I decided to leave uh, for my own reasons. And then I, I knew I was still going to rise, you know, like Maya Angelou. You know what I mean? I knew I still had it. I knew that it was up to me. And I knew that they want to see me go down. 
or maybe not even see me go down, but can care less, you know, so still I rise, you know, no matter what I go through, even you, yourself, um, anybody, everybody watching this, you, 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 everybody, you know what I'm saying, still you rise, like, still I rise, no matter what you go through, no matter what I've been through, I'm still gonna fucking rise. I'm in your new management company, um, name a few people you're managing, and how would future artists get in contact with you? So, um, Loudmouth Music Source, um, it started um, pretty much after I did everything. Um, I was with Spec. I was with everybody for a couple years around everything. I learned. And I still got everybody. You know what I mean? Um, so after a couple years of that, I just wanted to, like, put my own mentorship out there, put my own help, and, and really show other people how you make, you know, everybody can't make a millionaire. Everybody could take from me, but everybody can't make a millionaire. You know, and I, that, I think that's my desire. I think I found my ultimate desire and why I have so many companies, why I do so much. is because I, I just have this desire to make others, you know, just as wealthy. So I teamed up with um, James Whitney. You guys can go look him up. Um, he did music for Michael Jackson, Teddy Pendergrass, um, Stevie Wonder, everybody, everybody. And literally, right now, we're in the middle of trying to sell three songs he did for Michael. One of them got Janet on it when she was 12, her very first recording. And, um, well, professional recording. And we're actually in the middle of getting those three songs sold to a private uh, private um, buyer. So any of y'all private buyers got them M's about, uh, hey, we can start off negotiating at $7 million. Let me know. You know what I'm saying? So I got him on my team. He does production. So I got two artists. One is named Dustin Lyon, Dustin L-Y-O-N, and then Shaniqua. We call her Uniqua. And they both from Texas. Dope, dope artists. And they're going to be big. They're going to be huge. I guarantee everybody that's watching this, you're going to come back to this a year later. You're going to be like, he said it. They're going to be big. She, Her voice is phenomenal. His voice is crazy. So, you know, um, yeah, we're going to go to the top. We got a couple deals on the table. Well, one deal. Um, and we're just going to go from there. Now, everybody wants to know, what's the story behind you and Keisha Cole? The story behind me and Keisha Cole? Boy, hey, look, check this out, man. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell it to y'all like this. I plead the fifth, and I want my lawyer. Can't tell y'all all that. Grind face. <laughs>